Dealer, the Truck Authority. And that means you can get a best-selling Ranger with 3.9 financing or 750 cash back. Or how about the world's best-selling Ford F-150 with air conditioning at no extra charge. Even get $1,000 cash back on a Bronco. Get to Truck Month because deals like these move fast. So see your local Ford dealer, the Truck Authority. Welcome back to Las Vegas where the Aggies are enjoying a 14 to nothing halftime lead. But you heard John L. Smith as they uh, went to the locker room and after he referred to David Locke as being ugly, that the offense wasn't all that pretty. That's the Luxor Hotel in the background, by the way, you're looking at. And there's the Aggies as they're back. But still not completely satisfied with the uh, offensive performance. Here's a quick look at the stats. This check brought to you by Proform, the world's leading manufacturer of fitness equipment. Well, I would have suspected the Aggies would have more than 82 yards rushing after a half against a team that is right at the bottom uh, in rushing defense in this league, a team that gives up 512 yards a game. Yeah, indeed, the offense hasn't been what he wants. Uh, Patrick Mullins said, uh, Dave, one of six on his last six passes, and that was a five-yarder. No completions the last three drives of the first half, so I'm sure uh, John L. Smith is concerned. Well, and I would suspect, I mean, he didn't want to say anything, but I would suspect that he is seriously considering changing quarterbacks. We'll see what happens. There's Patrick Mullins. And one of the Aggie touchdowns. Well, in fact, this was the uh, the one to uh, Frazier, I believe, that uh, a 28-yarder that gave them a 7 nothing lead. Quick look at the keys. Keys are brought to you by Affiliated Insurance, specializing in business insurance and bonds. First of all, force the Rebels to pass. Boy, you want you want Brown throwing as much as you can because he's not accurate. Yeah, he's 11 of 23 the first half. He's thrown two interceptions, both of them picked up by Craig Miller, exploiting the linebackers. I thought they did it early with some of those passes over the middle. And Abu Wilson's run for 84 yards. He's on his way to a 100-yard game, so I think that's, that's picking up. All right, we're ready to go with the second half. This kickoff brought to you by your Utah Intermountain GMC truck dealers. Aggies got the ball to start the game, and of course, they moved on that first drive and scored. So they will kick it away. We get underway here in the second half. Utah State looking to pick up their fourth, third win of the year. They'll finish up next week against Pacific. And former Aggie coach Chuck Shelton. Ball is in the hands of Tony Burton. And Burton has some running room. Finally brought down, but not before he's able to scoot all the way up near the 35-yard line. So the Rebels will come out with decent field position to start this second half. And again, that's got to make John L. wince. When any time uh, even a decent return is pulled off by Nevada Las Vegas, these two teams are at the bottom of the league. UNLV's ninth and Utah State 10th in kickoff returns. Jared Brown is the quarterback for the Rebels, 6'1", 190-pound senior. He's passed for over 1,300 yards this year coming into the game. And look at Tony Burton he'll bounce off the tacklers. He'll get a couple. And Burton generally shares the running back duties with Shannon Wilson. But they're both productive backs in entirely different ways. Yeah, Burton's a, a sort of a scat back, the fastest guy on the team. Uh, he, in the first half, ran for 48 yards. This is a guy that, uh, coming into the game, had uh, piled up 686, which wasn't a lot more than Wilson had. Brown to throw. Pass is a little low. Could have been caught, but Carlos Baker didn't hang on. We've seen a lot of drop passes today. So that'll leave a third down. Another opportunity for the Aggie defense. Third down and seven. Rebels need to cross the 45-yard line for the first. And Jared Brown backs into the shotgun. Both of his interceptions, by the way, as you see right there, are by Craig Miller. And this pass is complete, and they're at midfield as Damon Williams, the freshman, and a nice little down and in, and Brown was able to hit him. It's funny you should mention Miller because he's the defensive back in on this play, and it looked like he was trailing uh, Williams there. In fact, he's giving him a bit of a cushion and finally comes up to make the stop after that uh, first down pass. Williams is a big kid, too. 6'4", 
tall receiver, 6'4", 205 pound freshman. One of maybe the top quarterback in LA high school football last year. Now a receiver. Now a receiver. Brown again. Got an open receiver. There's a flag down. And that ball is fumbled. Ball is fumbled it because it goes out of the end zone. It'll go over to the Aggies, but hang on. We've got a flag all the way back at the 40. You saw the flag go down just as Amar Briscoe took off and split the defenders. So a number of things to sort out here. Holding on the Aggies. Go down to David Locke to see what the coaches had to think about this. Coach Horton just yelled at his wide receiver, hey, you're not going to make ESPN Sports Center. Pull it in, damn it, pull it in. <laughs> da da da, da da da. Okay, so they're moving back. Let's see if we can get this sorted out. 10 yard penalty, previous spot. Automatic first down. So defensive holding gives the Rebels a first down at the 39-yard line, and everything else is, it uh, <laughs> didn't, didn't, didn't never existed. Huh. Well, bottom line is it helps out the Rebels. to have some sort of problem with the scoreboard. Isn't that your buddy, Craig, looking at it? No, he let it go. See, he just held up 15 seconds of this game. That's the first time he's blown the whistle. <laughs> Tony Burton tries the left side. There's a couple of quarterbacks, uh, well, Interestingly enough, you got Matt Wells warming up on the sideline for the Aggies, but he's warming up with Patrick Mullins. So, what are you they're, reading into that, Dave? They're both staying loose. They're good buddies. Whatever, for the betterment of the team. Second down, no gain there. In fact, a loss of about a foot. Round to the air again. Quick pass to the outside is complete. That's Briscoe. But it's about six Brown yards pass. shy of the first. You know, it was it was Brown who got hot at the end of the half. He had something like four of his last five passes, and he's come out. And not well. It's not big passes. He's he's getting the ball moved down the field, throwing with some sort of accuracy anyway. Big third down now coming as the Aggies try to hold the Rebels again. Brown's changing the play. On the option, oh boy. Fumble. Who's got it? Looks like the Aggies have fallen on it. I think the Aggies have the ball, and maybe that's the play Brown shouldn't have checked off to. Kenyatta Green was right on top of Brown and may have hurried that toss. That's one of those things where a sack isn't as good as a hurry sometimes because of what happens after the hurry. And in this case, Kenyatta probably forced him to toss that thing out early. If we see a replay, we might see that, and he probably didn't have a good look at his trailing running back when he got rid of that pitch on the option. Well, and part of the thing is, too, running the option is awfully tough to do if you haven't run it the entire game, and then you simply come right out and do it. Second look at Aggie football brought to you by Recreation Outlet. They're never undersold. There's the pitch. Whoops. And Mike Hudson right there to help keep the ball alive. And the Aggies have it. Abu Wilson takes the right side. Oh, he was just ripped up. Another Abu flag is down. Carrier. But if Wilson had kept his feet, he had nothing but end zone dead that ahead. Flag is out on that right side where the block was thrown to help spring Wilson. And it looks like Robert Holmes may have been holding. Indication on Utah State. Yep. Holding on the <laughs> ten yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Repeat, first down. So it'll be first and a bundle. 
about 22. Well, for the first time in a long time, I think, the Aggies had fewer penalties by halftime than UNLV. They had six, and UNLV had seven, and we're off and running again. Yeah, here we go. Mullins, Frazier's open, crosses midfield, and Aaron Frazier down to the 47, the 48-yard line. 43-yard line is where they'll spot it, excuse me, but a nice pass play that gets them. Now they're about two yards shy, two and a half yards shy of the first down, so a big pick up there by Mullins, and even that pass was behind Frazier as he turned around and come back and grab it. And still, it seemed like he was the guy all the way. Mullins' eyes never looked anywhere else, as you saw in the replay. Wilson, he has the first down, he's got more. Abu Wilson tripped up down to the 27-yard line. Jabbar Thomas tripped him up. Abu starting to run pretty well, David Locke. Coordinator of UNLV cringes a little bit because he used to be at Utah State and he recruited Abu and did a good enough job to get him at Utah State. Now it's costing him. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, and if Abu keeps this up, he'll be seen number one in his dreams for a long time. The Aggies with another first down, moving into touchdown territory. Five wide receivers for Patrick Mullins. And now Patrick makes an adjustment. Patrick was hit right as he released that ball, hit on the uh, left shoulder, and ended up going a little bit outside there. This Aggie football fact brought to you by Tony Romans, a place for ribs. They've scored 89% of the time once they get into the red zone, which is inside the 20. 17 touchdowns, 8 field goals. That's not a bad percentage. And I remember the first two or three games, how frustrated the Aggie coaches were because they weren't getting touchdowns. They were getting some field goals at that point of the season. The Aggies haven't scored a field goal, by the way, in three games. Looks like he might have been setting up. The, there it is. And Wilson again. This time he runs into balls loose. Rebels say they got it. Wilson ran into his own man before stumbling down to the 20-yard line. Rebels are saying it's their ball, and it is. Turnover. The Aggies cough it up at the 20. Let's go down to David Locke. As the Rebels come back out on the field right now, it's going to be really interesting to see how the offensive line plays because the offensive line coach of UNLV looked at all his players and said, all week you told me you were better than these guys. Well, if you're better than they are, show me. UNLV coach is trying to get the confidence level back up. Well, we saw what happened on their last possession. They lost the ball on a, a bad pitch. You can't blame the line on that. But... You know, Brown is so active, he doesn't really stand in the pocket. We're going to take a break. The Aggies leading 14 to zip, but the Rebels have the football. Affiliated specializes in several areas of insurance coverage. We write a lot of long-haul trucking business. We write a lot of aviation business. We write ski resorts. We write mining accounts, uh, people involved in the oil industry. Plus, we write a lot of shopping centers, land developers, uh, manufacturers, wholesalers, retailers. If you own your own business, we want to talk to you about handling your insurance needs. Inkley's, Utah's largest camera dealer, is also Utah's only premier Pentax binocular dealer. We stock every model, including the smart compact Jupiter 7x20 model for just $59.99. We also carry a full line of Pentax compact zoom cameras, including the world's first full-featured weather-resistant zoom compact camera in an exclusive Inkley's kit. At this easy-to-use ultra-compact with zoom lens, it's just $149.99 at Inkley's. Inkley's, our everyday sale prices will save you money on Pentax cameras and binoculars. The Sam Boyd Silver Bowl in Las Vegas. Aggies leading the Rebels 14 to nothing. And after the turnover, the Rebels have the football. Last two possessions for each team have stalled with fumbles. Burton around the right side. And not much work, but he manages to fight for about three and a half yards. Refs step in quickly. They don't want any more fighting. Did you hear what they were saying down there, Dave? Or is it repeatable? 
the uh, referees just were sitting there saying, hey, you guys have got to light it up. You've got to light it up a little bit and start playing the whistle. If you guys don't play the whistle, we're going to have some problems down here. Sort of like two weeks ago in Reno. <laughs> of course, that was before the whistle started blowing and after the gun sounded. Our sideline reports brought to you by Inkley's for the best value on photo and electronics. Brown's pass is complete to Carlos Baker. He'll be about a yard shy of the first. Mike Hudson making the defensive play for the Aggies. Sort of a mixed uh, dose of news for the Aggies on that last drive because it was the drive that saw Abu Wilson go over 100 yards, but it was also saw, uh, the one that saw them with their first turnover of the game. And, I think Abu now with that thing happening, and then remember that like the third drive of the game when he had the 69-yard touchdown run call back. Called back, yeah. A lot of frustration for the Aggie D offense and today. We also had a drop pass that would have put them close to field goal position near the end of the first half. First down and more for Burton. Burton gets a big block that springs him across midfield and finally run out of bounds, but not before he gets all the way to the 30-yard line, 35-yard line where he's run out of bounds by Markel McCain, but a good piece of running by Tony Burton. Sponsored in part by IFA, still serving your needs at home and on the farm. And a nice offensive play for Tony Burton. There's the offensive line helping them out initially. And he did a lot of the work himself. Some good blocking downfield as well. First and 10 for the Rebels at the 35-yard line. Aggies lead at 14 nothing. And this time Burton's wrapped up. Somebody lost a helmet downfield. Burton, the ball carrier. It's Kenyatta Green. I thought it was interesting that John L. Smith referred to the shutout at halftime and how he'd like to keep that going and have this defense not allow any points at all on the scoreboard by the Rebels. Well, they've been, uh, UNLV has been in the shadow of the goal line a couple of times before, and they yep. haven't because I think as much as Utah State's defense is doing things, uh, they've hurt themselves, UNLV, as with penalties. Around the throw. That's a pass that probably should have been caught by DeMond Williams. And there's a flag. It's going to be a roughing the passer is what they're pointing at. I think they've detected Ben Crosland with being there after, basically after the play was over. That must be the official's opinion because that's where the flag is, right in the neighborhood of where he downed Jared Brown. Jack Gatto's going to tell. Roughing the passer. 15-yard penalty, first down. Well, the Aggies helping out with a penalty. That's going to take the ball. It should take it all the way down to the 20, right around the 20, the 19-yard line. Big pickup for Jeff Horton's Rebels on a roughing the passer. Now they've each had one of those today. Rebels in the red zone. Fumble. Aggies say they've got it. And it looks like they do. Another turnover. So once again, the Rebels get into the red zone, and they are stymied by the Aggie defense. They've come up with a football. Utah State will take over at the 19-yard line, leading 14 to nothing. Mercury Sable. Imagine a sedan that looks this good, inside and out. Imagine it's all this affordable. And look, a front seat that can hold your cassettes, your coffee, or even a close friend. And just imagine going 100,000 miles without a tune-up. In the new car that's a million miles ahead of the competition. Drive Sable at your Mercury dealer. Imagine yourself in a Mercury now.
as I who suggested he can play for the Rebels. Right, his name is Michael Melissa. He's five foot five, 140 pounds. They put him in at running back in a practice situation. They hand the football off to him, and the offensive line decides he didn't like the article much. Didn't block from three carries, negative 33 yards, played nose guard, and got killed too. I don't think columnists are going to be real loose around Jeff Horton. <laughs> I'll bet that one isn't. First to ten for the Aggies after all that. Mullins. Mullins is hit and he fumbles. Another turnover. And again, it looked to me like the Aggies fell on it, but it's you got to start taking care of this football, folks. I think it's uh, Dyson, the Aggie offensive lineman that got Jesse on Johnson this one. Wow. Brandon pressure. Dyson. Let's watch it again now as Mullins steps up. He feels the pressure coming from his right, so he steps up, and there's another defender right on top. He starts the throwing motion. The ball is loose, and number 59 will dive right there on the ball and get it back for the Aggies. That's Brandon Dyson, the uh, sophomore out of Bountiful. Oh, those Braves lost yesterday to Fremont in the state semifinals. Mullins' pass is complete at the 50-yard line. And Kevin Alexander manages to hang on. By the way, KUTV will bring you the state 4A and 5A football championships next weekend from Rice Stadium on Friday night. Skyline against Fremont. This is Patrick Mullins, uh, and again, he gets it up high, but Alexander protects his body a little bit, then picks up a yard or two. First down at midfield, Wilson. Abu Wilson, a nice hole, cut back to the left, and he will Abu go Wilson all the way. And guess the what, folks? No flag. That will stand. Twice today we've seen Wilson with a run like that. This one, the Aggies get the keep. Well, that puts him up to about 171 yards with a 50-yard run on that play. So those uh, preseason uh, keys to the game we talked about, that one was certainly fulfilled to give the Aggies a three-touchdown lead. Well, and if you take that flag away, it could have been four. That's right. Come on, Marvin! 50-yard touchdown run for Abu Wilson. Aggies up 21 to nothing. Seven minutes to play in this third quarter, and Utah State looking good. Can a car that pushes the envelope of design and technology hold the line when it comes to price? Consider the innovative Dodge Stratus. There's an advanced multi-valve engine, dual airbags, air conditioning, cassette stereo. In fact, more standard features than Ford Contour, Nissan Altima, and Honda Accord. More passenger room, too. And Stratus offers one more innovation, better value, and a price starting at just $14,995. Dodge Stratus, it's full of answers. Now that cold weather set in, come into Intermountain Farmers for warmer work clothing. As if your job keeps you outside during the winter months, you know how cold it can get. Dressing properly can be critical. So whether your outdoor activities are for work or for fun, come see our stylish new jackets and workable insulated coveralls. Designed to be convenient and easy to put on as well as comfortable to work in. IFA has the cold weather apparel you need at a price you can afford. We're still serving your needs at home and on the farm. We're IFA. Number seven, Jared Brown, his team down 21 nothing. Aggies with the lead, and they just have kept the Rebels out of the end zone. Dodge Dealers remind you the rules have changed, and they have in the game of football. In 48, 1948, they had the one-inch kicking tee. In 65, they went up to that two-inch kicking tee, and then just a couple years ago, they finally eliminated, and we're not talking about on kickoffs, of course. They finally eliminated the kicking tee altogether on field goals. Sort of like the NFL, get these young kickers ready for the pros, and now you kick it right off the ground. Carlos Baker turns it up to the 21-yard line, but the Aggies have pretty much dominated this game, especially when the Rebels have been in scoring position. They've been in the red zone three times today and have failed to score on all three opportunities. Now, the two times uh, that the Rebels have had the ball this half, they have 
had mistakes when they tried to become an option team with Jared Brown. Remember Kenyatta Green forcing the early pitch right. that the Aggies jumped on. And this last time, as they were about to score, uh, I think the running back thought he was getting the ball, and I don't think Brown wanted to give it to him. He tried to keep it, and they had a mix-up, and they fumbled again. Flag down. Aggies are clapping. Play clock may have run Red out. ball. Procedure. On the offense. Five-yard penalty. First down. So it'll be first and 15 as they back that up, and things not going well for Jeff Horton and his Rebels. You know, the beginning of the season, obviously they're coming off of a bowl championship, but they had, what, 25,000 people in this stadium? Yeah, for the Arkansas State game, their first home game, 24-1 or something like that. And it's gone downhill steadily ever since. This is only their uh, third home, is this their third or fourth home game? They've only had a few this year, I know that much. Now that pass is over the head of Baker, but frankly, he was well covered. I don't think it really had much of a chance anyway. He had Mike Hudson in front of him. Cardi next to him. So second down at 15. You know, I, I'm looking around the stands, Dave, and I'm, I was about to say people are starting to file out, but how do you tell? There's not that many here anyway. <laughs> well, they started to file out back in September. Second and 15. Brown to the air. His pass is complete at the 24-yard line. Williams. Well, hang on. Are they going to say no go? They're going to argue over this one. Is uh, your buddy Craig out there helping out the uh, the Aggies? No, he's staying right out of the picture. I talked to Jack O'Kane, the, uh, the uh, man who's in charge of the officials in the Big West. Oh, in fact, John L. On, uh, Smith on the sideline is talking to our, the official we were mentioning. Anyway, well, the fact he's walking all the way to the sideline to explain the call to John L. Smith is the... Rebels come to the line of scrimmage. Well, they gave it to him. So it's third down and six. They need to cross the 30-yard line for the first. Pass is high, but it's held on to Williams. And Williams up to the 40-yard line, and that's where six foot four comes in handy. He's a tall one, and he had to use it all to catch that one. You know, Craig Miller, number 20 for the Aggies, was covering on the play and was right there, but was it appeared to be nervous about making a hit before the ball was delivered. Let's see if we can see that. So he kind of dodged and looped around the receiver and actually freed him up as uh, they're coming up line of scrimmage again. Here's the toss and the catch, and Miller just missed him altogether. Brown, sack. He is sacked. He is down. They're all running out to the football, but that makes no matter. And that's Walter Fiafia, Fia, who's back in uh, action. And, uh, who, he's missed most of the season with those knee problems. And in the Utah game, thought his season was over. And he's played quite a bit today. Big sack for Big Walt. And now the officials again conferring. The flags are upfield at the other end of the field at about the 20 and 25 yard line. Down at the... Notice they send the former wide receiver to chase him down. <laughs> the other guy was going, he got about 10 yards downfield. He was winded. No, 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 dead ball. We have a dead ball foul. Personal foul, 15 yards. From the uh, end of the run, automatic first down. So personal foul, which means automatic first down, and boy, those flags were way downfield. One of them was at about, what, the 12? Man, well, another penalty at any rate. Rebels have the ball first and 10 at the 46. Jared Brown has come out and led a fine offensive drive right here. Shannon Wilson now. We haven't heard much from Shannon today. But he gets a couple. And he ran into Ben Crosland. And at the bottom of the pile, uh, I think it's Jer Greg, Greg, Greg Stenson. Stenson, yeah. Was, again, we mentioned how he was hurt in the very first game of the year and has fought like crazy to get back in the lineup. And now this happens. There you see him. And he's a 
He's a junior out of this very town. Well, John L. gets the explanation, and we'll take a timeout. Aggies lead at 21 0. The Chevy Truck America's opening, November 25th and 26th at the Park City Ski Area. Catch superstar Alberto Tomba, last year's overall World Cup champion, as he leads the charge for over $100,000 in prize money. For ticket information and event schedules, call 801-649-8111. The 10th annual Chevy Truck America's opening. It's not just a ski race, it's a celebration. Hi, this is Pit Stop Bob for LW's new Texaco place. As you can see, I dug out my high dollar camcorder to give you a personal guided tour. This goes in here. You'll notice in here some of the finest hot and cold fixings in town. And over there, you can get a high-tech car wash. Kind of convenient now, isn't it? And boy, what a concept. Well, that's all for now. I'm Pit Stop Bob for LW's Texaco, and we'll leave the pumps on for you. 24 to play in the third quarter. The Aggies enjoy a 21-0 lead. Been a little sloppy here in the second half. The Aggies had a fine drive that culminated with Abu Wilson's touchdown run, but we've seen a lot of fumbles and a lot of penalties. Brown to the air. The pass is complete to Shannon. And Shannon Wilson pulls his way to the 37-yard line. Another first down. Well, Wilson has only 15 yards rushing, but they get the ball in his hands with the pass, and that'll uh, go into his receiving totals, and uh, the longest play he's been involved in today, and Sean Coleman, one of the Aggies there to stop him. Is that intercepted? No, they're going to say it's too low. Looks like it might have been caught, but they say, uh-uh. So Jared Brown has really come out on, on this drive and run his team with efficiency here. His passes have been fairly crisp, and they've run the ball well on a couple of occasions. Second and ten. Has to get rid of that ball, and it is complete. Out of bounds at the 31-yard line is Carlos Baker. That's with a third. One thing you can say about quarterbacks like Jared Brown, they have to be tough. These guys are always on the run and always getting hit. Well, watch this play as he takes the snap, and from behind, number 95, Ben Croslin is with him stride for stride. He throws, and Ben grabs him and the catch is still made by Baker. We saw the Aggies earlier this year absolutely beat up on a guy named Cody Ledbetter of New Mexico State. He really took a beating. Third and two. Brown's pass just beyond the fingertips. And actually, from this angle, we couldn't really tell, but Markel McCain might have batted the thing away. It was intended for Carlos Baker. And you would presume the Aggies would go for it in this position, down by 21, and you're down at the 30-yard line. You may as well, and they will. Rebels, fourth and two. Will you slap me next time I call them the Aggies? They're probably going to try to draw them off slide. That's usually a good play. Brown to throw. Incomplete, the Aggies have held again, and they'll take over on down at the 31-yard line. I don't know if Wilson, number 38 there, if he'd made a diving catch, if that would have been good enough for a first down. I'm not sure you don't run the ball there. Yeah. Two, just sweep, sweep it around. Of course, you know, we've seen him twice try to do that, and they, they fumbled. David, what do you think? that amazes me about what the Aggie defense has done is that we haven't seen the running of Jared Brown. Great time for maybe a QB draw with a spread out team or maybe his quarterback's sweep. We haven't seen Jared Brown running the ball, one of their best weapons. 
That's a good point. I mean, he, he passed the ball well on that last drive, but when you need two, go to your strength. Here comes Abu Wilson again. Abu Wilson crosses midfield, and another great piece of running by Wilson, who's all the way down to the 29-yard line, and the Aggie offense is off and running now. There comes a point when you start building up such a lead that it becomes increasingly difficult for the Rebels, anyway, to defend. And He's look up at this. To, yeah, 19 no. carries, 211 yards, and a touchdown. And keep in mind, there was a, what was that, a 60-yard recall back? 71, officially. 71 yard. He'd be at a 300-yard day, just about. To work for the Hankies. Wilson again. Gets a couple. Took Sean Griswold to bring him down. <laughs> Not really, but he was trying to throw a block. Well, Gris Griswold's brought him down a couple times today. <laughs> hey, you run into Sean Griswold, you're not going very far. Second down to two, 285 pound senior, number 91, that's him. Big Sean. He's played six different positions with the Aggies. This guy's all over the place. Santa Rosa, California. Second down, Mullins. Pass is complete to Alexander. And Kevin down to the 16-yard line where he gets out of bounds. 21 zip. Aggie's looking to build on that. The biggest win of the year so far would be that Northern Illinois, wouldn't it? 42 to 7. Wilson just chewing up the yardage as he goes all the way down to the six yard line. We saw Greg Stenson go down a couple of series ago. Let's check with David Locke to see how he's doing, Dave. Well, Greg Stenson has a possible fracture of the tibula as I play doctor here on TV. Uh, and they won't be able to tell what the situation is until they get him back and be able to get some x-rays. But he obviously will not return today. Boy, the injury bug just bites this team all season long, Craig. Well, and and uh, I was thinking of Matt Hawk, a defensive lineman who broke his leg and is not available to this team anymore. And Stenson, it's doubly frustrating because he worked so hard to get that ankle back in shape. I was just looking up the... Uh, I was just looking up at the uh, the best running game by an Aggie ever was 292 yards by Roger Grant five years ago. And if they keep Abu in there, oh, he wow. could continue on the way. Ooh, there's a look at the injury. Jabbar Thomas had his ankle stepped on. Aggie's knocking at the door. Wilson, he'll hop ahead for a couple. As he's got the first. So it'll be a first and goal. Jermaine Webster making the tackle on the play. The ball and a whole three. group of players coming in as they get set to try to put another seven on the board. You mentioned they haven't had a field goal. What was it, three games? Yeah, he, uh, Mike Anor missed one against New Mexico State, then didn't even try one against Utah and Nevada, so his last make was against Northern Illinois. First and goal. Wilson. Wilson. Actually did a nice, nice job to avoid losing yardage as he gets back to about the original line of scrimmage. Pick up of a yard. It'll be second goal. Abu, uh, coming into the game, had been able to score a touchdown in, in just about every game this season. He had three touchdowns against San Jose State. Didn't score against Colorado State and didn't score against the Utes. Wilson again. To the end, touchdown. Aggies have scored again. And Utah State just completely busting out this afternoon in Las Vegas, not having much trouble at all on both sides of the ball. Just fine defense, and the offense played really well in the second half. It's a good push up front, Dave, and, and Ernesto Ramos led him into the hole, so he gets a little bit of a credit uh, for that score, too. Micah Norris putting some points on the board just with point out. 28. Zip. Wow. 
fine afternoon so far for Utah State. There's a line of the scrimmage look at what happened there as Abu takes it right up the middle and scores. There you see a Dyson, among others, and Holmes who seem to be leading him through the hole as well. And on that drive, 69 yards and seven plays, I think Abu touched the ball on every one of those plays except the pass to uh, Alexander. Let's run back down on the field now to uh, David Locke. As you look at the scoring drive right there, 69 yards and seven plays, David. Craig Hislop's been talking a lot today about Robert Holmes, the offensive lineman. Even on the play before where Abu had to cut back, he was the pulling guard on the play. Two blitzing linebackers on the other side. He knocked both of them with their butt on the ground and their feet in the air. Two guys in which he got to the ground on that one and then led the block there on the touchdown. Robert Holmes really has stepped up and had a nice day. The only unfortunate thing about him is he is a senior. 270 pound senior. That'll knock you around. You know, if you look back at the Aggies, the games they played this year, the schedules, they're not that far off from being, you know, they lose to uh, Arkansas State by four. They lose to San Jose State by two. They lose to Nevada by five. Lost to Southern Miss by three. Yes, Southern Miss. So there, there's a lot of games. They're right there. A couple of breaks. Kick is away as the Rebels try to get something going. Carlos Baker has it. And not much. Gets up to the 25, 26-yard line. A freshman linebacker by the name of Marcus Scott made the stop on that play, number 45. Rebels come back out with Jared Brown at quarterback. They've done a fine job moving between the 20s. But really haven't been able to get anything going once they're in the red zone. Shannon Wilson. He'll get five, but there's a lot of work to be done. If you're a Rebel fan. And it's Kenyatta Green who uh, comes up with the stop. There's Kenyatta, linebacker, who once out of high school, signed a letter of intent to play at Ohio State. Pass is tipped, and no one could get to it, but again, a little high. Uh, and the target, of course, is 6'4", but even for uh, Damon Williams at 6'4", that was just too high, and now a third down. And this has got to be frustrating for that man, Jeff Horton. Saw his team last week with their second highest offensive output of the season. Thought he might have had something going, but the Aggies have come in and really play well. And you had to figure with losing by five to uh, league leader Nevada last week that the Aggies had something going right. And they've certainly shown it today. Brown's pass incomplete and very well played that time. You got to give credit to the Aggie defense because. And at uh, David was Terrence Gaines who's back in the lineup after having a knee injury that a lot of people thought would uh, put him out for the season. But he's getting a little playing time here in the second half. Uh, early in the season, clearly the, the best defensive back the Aggies had. Again, Spencer Wagner didn't make this trip. The defensive back who had two interceptions last week. He's home with the flu. Line drive kick to Jason Bandy at his 25-yard line. And he's wrapped up. So the Aggies take over the 25. They got a 28 nothing lead. Time to start milking the clock. You mentioned some of the fans that were leaving. You know, you're, it's, it is hard to tell because there's so few of them here anyway. The funniest thing is you still have people sitting way up in the back row. You know, there must be 20,000 great seats. And, eh, well, it gives you a good view, I guess. Now into the backfield for the uh, Aggies is Melvin Blue. I wonder if John Ells decides that Abu has uh, done his thing for today and it's time to get a rest. There's Kevin Alexander for a first down. If you're uh, Utah State, you certainly want to make the most of this position because you haven't been in this spot really much this year at all. The Northern Illinois game is about it. 
Carlos Hilliard kicking up on the play. Well, there's an injury on the field while we're sorting that out. Let's go down to David. Well, David talked a lot today about big plays, and we've seen them all year long. Big plays, big plays. You always wonder as a fan why they happen. Talking to defensive coordinators throughout the season, I found out three things that take place. Number one, Craig, you've talked about it a lot, getting off your blocks. Linebackers' inability to get off blocks. But the two biggest things they talked about was poor pursuit angles and obviously poor tackling. So I get those three together like we've seen here in the second half. And that's why the Aggies are moving the football so well. And Abu is running it with great success. But look at that career high, 231 yards. What a nice day. And, you know, we commented coming into this that he's coming off two really, well, one really poor performance against Nevada, and then he struggled against the Utes. Well, he had 33 yards against Nevada, and it's hard to imagine uh, against anybody uh, Abu could could uh, be that unproductive. But uh, those injuries, I think, have been on his mind, and a little more time to rest. He's doing a little better. He had 78 yards against Utah and still didn't score a touchdown. Rebels, by the way, are warming up another quarterback on the sideline. And it's Kevin Crook. Ball start on the offense. And you heard David Locke tell us earlier in this game that uh, Jeff Horton is the type of coach that just loves to pull his quarterbacks. Yeah, I, I, to be honest with you, I'm surprised Horton has left I mean, with the, the philosophy he has of his quarterback, I'm surprised he's left Brown in as long as he has today. After the penalty, it's a first and 15. Mullins looking deep. There, no flag there. There's a flag clear back on uh, probably a late hit on Patrick Mullins, but quite a bit of colliding between the receivers and defensive backs. And you saw Ivy Russell try to gain position, but it looks like we may have another roughing the passer. Face mask, it's a face mask, but it's clear back uh, at the 20 is where they threw that flag. On the defense, five yard penalty, repeat, first down. <laughs> We've done them a Two plays. Hike penalty. Back it up five yards. Hike penalty. Move it back forward five yards. It's like that episode of Match when they say, okay, move a little bit to the right. Okay, now move a little bit to the left. Now that's the essence of football. <laughs> oh boy. So we're basically back where we started. First and ten. Melvin Blue is running back there, helping out with the blocking. Kevin Alexander has it, and he's out of bounds at the crossing midfield. You're talking about the change of quarterback that apparently is coming with Crook, the freshman, coming in for UNLV. That's fine with John L. Smith. Again, he doesn't want to see the other senior, Jason Davis, who completed the 28 passes for 347 yards in the last quarter. That's incredible. Isn't that amazing? Both NCAA records last year against John Idaho team, and uh, Idaho still won the game. Well, I mean, what's amazing, you still got to get, you got to get the ball back to keep doing that. Idaho must have just really gone conservative. Melvin Blue takes the ball around the right side. There's Melvin. He's just a freshman. 220 pounder. That was a fine pair, actually, last next year in Melvin Blue and Ernesto Ramos. And then, of course, if Wilson can get that extra year from the NCAA, that's going to bring us to the close of the third quarter. Already? That's it. 28 nothing. We'll head to the final period from Las Vegas. Coming up. When I'm in my Jimmy, nothing gets in my way. Of course, I've got Jimmy's available four-wheel drive anti-lock brakes and premium smooth suspension. Yeah, when I'm in my Jimmy, I'm in complete control. It's when I get out that I begin to panic. Now with the purchase of a GMC Jimmy, you can get up to $300 worth of add-on accessories at no charge. See your Utah Intermountain GMC truck dealer today. Most furniture stores have a few recliners to choose from. 
But in R.C. Willie's Lazy Boy Gallery, we have only a few hundred, that is. And during the Veterans Weekend Sale, everyone is priced to move. So don't just sit there. In R.C. Willie's Lazy Boy Gallery, there are a number of things that make our furniture move. But few things work better than these. Now this seven-piece cookware set is just $9.99 with your new purchase. Don't miss our Veterans Weekend Sale. Hey, a great afternoon for Utah State football. Not much to cheer about if you're a Rebel fan. The Aggies looking good today. John L. Smith and his team, they have the ball now. Trying to protect this lead and just run things out. 28-0, Patrick Mullins leading the team. Second down and eight. And we move into the fourth quarter. Melvin Blue. And look at Melvin drag Marvin Robinson with him for a few yards. So, uh, assuming Abu Wilson is finished today, 231 yards rushing, which means only Roger Grant against Long Beach State with 292. Uh, Rick Paris against Fresno with 252. Louis Giamona against Idaho with 247. Jay Van Noy back in 1948 against Arizona State with 242. And uh, Louis Giamona with 242 against CSU have greater games than Abu today. Well, you know, you throw him in for one more good pickup, and he might pass all of them. First down on the completed pass to Kevin Alexander. And now the Rebels starting to go to their bench. Carlos Hilliard in on the stop. He's mixing up the calls on this one, and this time it's the toss out to the sideline from Mullins to uh, Alexander, who makes the catch. And for Kevin Alexander, he now has seven catches for 82 yards in this game. Boy, is he coming off a nice game. 13 receptions. 236 yards last week in a losing cost. Flag is down, so this may not count. We'll enjoy it anyway, but there's a flag down back at the 42-yard line. And it's coming back. It's against the Aggies. Remember that long run of games that Utah State had alive where Every time they drove the field and avoided a touchdown, they scored. Or at least every scoring drive was because they avoided penalties. Single shift, offense, five-yard penalty, repeat, first down. Yeah, but since then, they score even with penalties. <laughs> They've had to learn that. If they failed to score on every single drive they had a penalty, they, they might not have scored this year. That's true. First and 15, Wilson's back into the game looking to add to that rushing total. Craig, get your calculator back out. You're gonna have to redo that whole that whole little bit you gave us. What? How much more does he need to, to uh, have the best single game performance? Well, the, the record is 292 and he was up to 231 before that rush, so he needed about uh, 60 uh, right, yards. Well, he carried the two and... If he could bust one here, he'd be more than halfway there. Look at that, rushing yards, wow. Majority of that has come from Abu Wilson. Mullins will go to the air here and dump it to Wilson. And Wilson will pick up a bunch here. It won't count as rushing yardage, but what can we do for all purpose? <laughs> Abu Wilson. 6'1", 202 pounds, senior, looking for an extra year if the NCAA will grant it to him. He was injured a couple years back, didn't even attend school. That's the argument. And he sure knows what to do when it gets this pass, obviously, a nice gainer, and it does add to that all-purpose total. He's six in the country in all-purpose running. Here he goes again, Wilson. A nice hole! And Abu Wilson give him another 11 yards, 10, 11 yards there. It puts him up to 248 yards. There's John L. Smith. He's got to be loving this. I'd have to say the only the only real uh, downside so far was when he had to face Dave Locke at halftime. <laughs> of course, he's got to see him again at the end of the game. 
First and goal. Wilson. And tripped up behind the line of scrimmage, but manages to fall forward enough to pick up a yard or two. And equally as important for the Aggies, actually there's no gain at all, really. Aggies and the Rebels keep the clock running. If you're a Rebel, you uh, would just as soon stop the madness as soon as possible. That puts Abu at an even 250, so he's third now on the list, and with two more yards, he ties Rick Perros to the second he's best climbing ever. We can't even keep track of it, folks. He's climbing so fast. To the corner. Way over the head of Kevin Alexander. Uh, John L. has a look of contentment on his face. He's got to be pleased today. See the guy holding the cords for him there is Matt Hawk, his yeah. former standout defensive lineman. Looks like Matt's got a little bit of a tangle problem there. He's, he might want to just get out some wire cutters at this point. Third and goal. Mullins looking to throw. Flag is down. Pass interference. Kevin Alexander. That'll be that'll be coming back. And the Aggies will have another shot. Well, the guy I think that got detected on that was, was Jabari Thomas, number 32. What do you suppose he was named after? He used to be a running back at UNLV. I remember in the days in the early 90s when he was carrying the ball. Early? Now, how long has he been here? Since the early 90s? Jabbar Thomas. Well, I just assumed he was named after Holding Sharif Shaw's younger brother at UCLA. <laughs> Half the distance to the goal. Automatic first down. First and goal after that. Wilson with Ramos in front of him to clear the hole. Let's see if it works. Abu Wilson. Wilson. Very Wilson. close, but it'll be about a foot short. There he is. You can see how close. This would be, uh, he's got, what, two touchdowns on the day. See if we can tell how close as Mullins just turns and, and he does follow Ramos through the hole and can't quite make it out. Same formation. Ramos leading for Abu Wilson. Second and goal. Wilson dives in. Touchdown, Aggies. Touchdown, Utah State. You know, I'm wondering, David Locke's on the Rebels' sideline. It's always interesting to see, you know, a team gets dejected, obviously, when they're down 34 and soon to be 35 to nothing. But you wonder at what point they, you really start seeing some quit in them. And there's some teams that never show you that and others that do. But this team's lost by 35, 45, 27, 28, 48, 38, and 23 this year. So this is nothing new. <laughs> okay, so they're feeling pretty good. <laughs> It'll be over in a while to go home and have a hot meal. <laughs> True 16-inch aluminum wheels, specially designed tires, and a precision-tuned suspension might seem a bit sporty for a caravan. But when you think about it, it makes sense. Considering all the racing around you do. The new Dodge Caravan Sport. See your Utah Dodge dealer. Inkley's, Utah's largest camera dealer, is also Utah's only premier Pentax binocular dealer. We stock every model, including the smart compact Jupiter 7x20 model for just $59.99. We also carry a full line of Pentax Compact Zoom cameras, including the world's first full-featured weather-resistant Zoom Compact camera in an exclusive Inkley's kit. At this easy-to-use ultra-compact with Zoom lens, it's just $149.99. We'll save you money on Pentax cameras and binoculars.
35 to nothing. It's all coming up Aggies here in the desert of Southern Nevada. The Aggies just dumping the Rebels. Let's go back down on the field to, or should we say the turf to David Locke, Dave? Well, Dave, you know, a lot of people wonder what AstroTurf is, but here at this stadium, literally, this, I can literally pick up the turf. That's all we're playing on right there. No wonder players hate to play on this stuff, and that's concrete underneath. They do it so Ow. that you can end up having the mud bog and things like that here also. And they have plenty of mud bogs in this stadium. Kickoff brought to you by your Utah Intermountain GMC truck dealers. Up to the 29-yard line where the Rebels will take over there, Tony Burton. Uh, you know, at Rice Stadium, they put in that new combo turf, which is it's a little softer. There's the scoring drive. But I've heard a lot of players, well, a lot of players have told us they really don't like it. They haven't been able to find the right shoe to make it work. We'll see how that develops over the coming season. Yeah, the, uh, the sport grass. Sport grass, yeah. It's very don't, slippery. Don't they have huge rollers here that roll up this field? Completely? Yes, they do. They just roll it right up, green in the mud. Hold the tractor poles and mud bogs, as David pointed out. And then roll it out again. A flag came flying into the middle of that pack. The new quarterback, by the way, is Kevin Crook. He's a freshman, 6'3", 218-pounder, number five. All of you uh, Dodger fans will remember his dad. Remember Gordon Crook? Sure. Played in the Dodger organization for all those years. First of all, face mask on the defense. 15-yard penalty, automatic, first down. You know, if you were watching this game, there's Crook's uh, season totals, uh, and you had a plane to catch, these penalties would really drive you crazy. Yeah, like some of these refs, they, you'd think they'd let it go. You, you would figure that they're booked on some of those flights. But you know what, if you were like us, you were just going to plan on spending the evening in a casino, kicking back, doesn't matter. Crook's first pass of the day. Complete. Complete across midfield to Damon Williams. And as you might expect, on the Aggie sideline, Matt Wells is warming up. But he's actually, again, warming up with Mullins, but if he gets in there, it won't be because of any inefficiency it's called a blowout here's your gringo scoreboard saw nevada leading arkansas state beats northern illinois arkansas over southwest louisiana and vanderbilt beats up on louisiana tech air force by 18 over army and there's movement And another gringo score. BYU 31-14 over New Mexico. That's a final big game next week as the Cougars and Utes do battle in Provo. Offsides against the Aggies. So again, another five-yard pickup for the Rebels. So by virtue of penalties, Aggies giving up some yardage to the Rebels. Crook back to pass again. And that one might be, no, right into the, I thought it was going to be intercepted. It was right into Mike Hudson's hands, but he can't hang on. Strange score in the uh, Big West. The final San Jose State beats New Mexico State 38-37. Wow. One point ball game, but not here. The Aggies have had their way. Coming up soon, we'll name the pro form most valuable player for today's game. Did a couple of nice performances, certainly Abu Wilson, one of those. Brook to throw again. That pass is complete. It'll be short of a first down to Carlos Baker. The uh, Rebels at least trying to get on the scoreboard. And you know the Aggie defense would love to come up with a shutout. 
But the Aggies are going mostly with their starting defenders, but that is not so much because they want to, uh, you know, keep the shutout as because I don't think they've got that many people to bring in. Uh, they didn't travel with the full amount that you can travel with in the Big West because they don't have that many people available and healthy. Third and two. Brook, the freshman, making a change on the call. They'll keep it on the ground, and nothing to do it. Well, they'll give him. I don't think it's enough for the first down, but they get maybe a yard. It's going to be fourth down. Tony Burton just didn't quite get the push from the offensive line. I think John L. Smith actually is he's got a smile on his face and he's looking pretty happy right now. They're gonna measure this. I don't think it's a first though. I could be wrong. Oh look at this. It's about an inch short. Unless you count the pole. It is. An inch shy of a first down. Fourth down. You can see number 97 leaning over the ball there, uh, Danilo Robinson. Obviously, he's a starter. They've got Eddie Davis, who I think started this game, still in there. Lomi Favai, a little guy, relatively speaking, along the defensive line, is playing. David Gill is still in there. He started this game. Ben Crosland, uh, Kenyatta Green, Mike Hudson, all the guys that started the game are still on the field. What do you do, though? Dave Dave Locke, tell me, what do you do? It's fourth and inches. You're down by 35. What are you going to do? Play action bomb to number six. <laughs> You're so far wrong. It's a keeper, the correct call, and that's a first down. Oh, boy. See, we're, we're able to decipher all the intricacies of football up here. Let's run back down on the field now. Interesting story on a serious note with David Locke. You got a football helmet there with you? Yeah, I do. UNLV's football helmets uh, this season have the RB on it. It's for Randy Brewer. He was September 17th. He was killed outside a nightclub. He was the starting tight end on last year's club. On the positive end of things, last year he finished the season and he said to, to the coach, you know what, I've won a championship. That's the highest point I can get to. And so therefore, I, he gave the coach a hug. He gave his assist, other coaches a hug and he left and he went on to work. He was working for the Denver Nuggets in the sports information department and some other places and that's why this year UNLV has an RV on their helmet. And a little uh, tribute to their former teammate as they will remember him he right went, now. You know he went on to, to work for the Denver Nuggets I think. Uh, Tommy Shepard who used to be down here as the sports information guy is the PR guy now for the Nuggets and I'm sure yeah. had a lot to do with Randy getting that job. They're a tight bunch, this Rebel group. I told you before, they take they take care of their own. There's not a lot of them. There's not a lot of history. You don't go way back like, you know, Ohio State and Wisconsin and BYU and Utah and stuff like that. In fact, what was the previous name of University of Nevada, Las Vegas? It wasn't UNLV. Come on, Mr. Uh, it was Nevada Normal School. I don't know, what was it? I don't remember either. Oh, <laughs> I was asking you. I uh, needed the information. No, you don't ask those kind of questions unless you have the I think answer. it was like Nevada Southern. Nevada, Nevada Southern, Southern is correct. It was Nevada Southern. <laughs> See, I knew. I just I knew. See if you did. Third down. They need 10 and 35 points. Aggies leading big. Passes over the outstretched hands of Carlos Baker. Had that been Damon Williams at 6'4", he might have made the reception. Baker is six inches shorter. So another fourth down. Last time it was fourth and inches. This time it's fourth and ten. the quarterback complete they've got the first down 
And a couple more. So Crook on target to Jason Tui. As the Rebels dig into their bench somewhat. Here's Crook coming this way. And there's the catch by number 88. Boy, you know these Aggies have loved this shutout. The Rebels inside the red zone again. We've seen them here many times this afternoon, but they just haven't been able to score. Crook to the air again. And he's sacked. Ball is fumbled. That's a loose ball, and the Aggies have it. The Aggies have recovered the fumble. And that's Lomi Fa'avai, who's been playing at a defensive down position, and he only weighs about 229. Well, he was in the right place. So once again, can you believe the just bad luck the Rebels have had in the red zone? The Aggies have shut them down. Affiliated Insurance Agency is a locally owned and operated independent insurance agency. We are 98% business insurance. One of the main things business owners are concerned about is the stability of the agency that they're doing business with. I have been in the insurance business 40 years, and affiliated insurance agency is going to be in business for many years to come. support for this football team this year but when you're down 35 nothing there's even less most of the few people that were here have gone home what they have six seven thousand maybe that might be stretching it most of them have gone home as it has been all Aggies this afternoon 35 to nothing and now Matt Wells is the quarterback for Utah State as Patrick Mullins has pretty much done his job and John L Smith starts going to some of his subs Pass is a little low, but Kevin Alexander is there to make the catch. You talked about how the UNLV has, has, has advanced the ball all day. Three times in the first half day, they were inside the Aggie 20, and twice here in the second half inside the 20, and two other times in this game to the 35 and the 31 of Utah State, and nothing to show for it. Complete shutout. Nice performance by the Aggie defense today. They go back to the ground game, and... Melvin Blue's not going to get much. I would assume at this point we've seen the end of Abu Wilson for this day. And what an afternoon. Uh, 252 yards. And on your little chart there, Craig, where do we where do we post him? He'll end up, he'll end up even with Rick Peros, who on the fateful day in September of 1978 ran for 252 yards against Fresno State, and that still is exactly 40 yards away from Roger Grant's school record five years ago against Long Beach State, but it's a brilliant performance. It was a nice, nice day for Abu Wilson and the whole Aggie team. Melvin Blue, and Blue breaks a tackle. Melvin Blue! And Blue finally brought down, but not before he gets all the way to the 20-yard line. Let's go down to David Locke. What a run by Melvin. And Melvin rolls over the left-hand side here. We talked earlier about what creates big plays. We said middle linebacker, or linebackers getting caught up on blocks. That happened a little bit. We said bad pursuit angles, but I think if you look at this one, poor tackling would be <laughs> exemplified right there. Well, and just as David Locke said that, another uh, defender bounced off of Blue. And that was a counter play, and the Aggies had some good blocking ails early on, but it was it was indeed some poor tackling, and Melvin took advantage. First down at the 20-yard line. Now already up 35-0. The Aggies may be adding to that as they go to the air. Now, this is interesting. You throw a pass and you run out of bounds. You're leading by 35, 455 to go. Second 
they're, they seem to be really going heavy to Kevin Alexander, and he seems to be really excited every time he makes a catch. You wonder if he's close to some sort of record, but last week he had 236 yards receiving, so it couldn't be yards because he's not he's not anywhere near that. He's he? got th that was his 81st catch with that. The the school record for a season for a game is is 85 for a season, for a but season. he's closing in on it with uh, what did I say 80? But he's got 81. another week. He's got another week for that. That's Wells right. is going down here. Yeah, he doesn't he doesn't need to do that. I just thought it was interesting that he caught that ball, immediately sprinted out of bounds, and was very excited. Let's see if they grab the Wells face mask, because he's looking right at us now, and he drops back in this play. Well, not, they look like they did, but they just got him around the neck. That was uh, Marvin Robertson, one of the inside linebackers, making the tackle. Matt Wells, you remember when we were at San Jose, talked with his father who travels with him at all the games. I'm sure dad didn't have trouble getting a seat today. Another reception to Kevin Alexander. Well, this is Kevin's 10th catch of the day. 82nd of the year. Three short of a school record. We had 13 receptions last week and 10 so far now. He had 14 against New Mexico State and Arkansas State. Blue. And Melvin Blue. Yeah, maybe a couple. Well, one, one point you made is the Aggies really can't go that deep anyway. They don't have that many people. Well, they don't you know? on this trip. In fact, last week, uh, the dress list against Nevada was not even uh, as many as Nevada brought to the game. Because you can travel with a certain number in the Big West, and the Aggies didn't dress that many. Well, you know, 35 nothing. John Elk do anything he wants here. He isn't going to see the Rebels for a long he probably, time. He'll, he'll probably think that uh, by the end of this game, David Locke actually isn't ugly anymore. <laughs> no, I don't know if it, I don't know if it's that good. Wells is going to keep it, and Matt Wells will score a touchdown for the Aggies on the keeper. It was a great fake. It was a fantastic fake. Let's go down to David Locke. Uh, nice touchdown for Matt, Dave. You know, right before the play, I'm watching John L. You guys had the camera on it. He's all smiling. It was because Patrick Mullins was yapping in his ear. Right after the, the play went in, Mullins started yapping at him. Then John L. took his paper and hit him on top of the head. I got to figure Mullins saw the play call. I was like, come on, I want that play. I yeah. want touchdown. <laughs> it might have taken Patrick a little longer to get there. 41 to nothing. Make it 42, a complete annihilation. The Aggies on pace for their biggest win of the year. 42 to seven was the score earlier this season against Northern Illinois. But they are enjoying a fine afternoon in Nevada today. Let's say you were thinking about applying for a home equity loan. You could go to Bank One, where you could borrow up to 100% of your home's equity. Or you could go to some other bank, where you could only get 80%. Of course, 80% is good enough, isn't it? For a 100% home equity loan, call Bank One. It's that simple. We've been saying Murphy Villager is the minivan that drives like a car, but actions speak louder than words. Mercury Villager, it's more like a sport coupe for seven. You'll love Villager's value. And the safety features, now with dual airbags plus anti-lock brake standard. I'd like to see you try that in any other minivan. Imagine yourself in a Mercury now. At your Mercury dealer. 42 to nothing, not a whole lot to cheer about for the Rebels, but a great afternoon for the Aggies, who will improve to three and seven. Time now to name our pro form most valuable player. I think it's an easy one, folks. A lot of great performances today, but number one was Abu Wilson. And, Craig, he had a sensational afternoon. Well, he ran for 252 yards. And remember, at halftime, we said, yeah, he's doing fine. He's got 84 yards, and the Aggie running game's picking up. We didn't. We probably uh, expected this by the end of the game, but at halftime, it didn't look like it was going to happen like this. The Aggies have really piled up the yardage in the second half. Today's Most Valuable Player brought to you by Proform, the world's leading manufacturer of fitness equipment and the kickoff. 
Brought to you by your Utah GMC dealer. Three minutes to go before the Aggies can wrap this one up and travel home a happy bunch. They finish up against Pacific. Victory there put them at four and seven for the year, and they start looking ahead to next season. Here's a look at the touchdown and the fleet-footed Matt Wells. And some credit to our camera guy on the field who was not as fooled as the Nevada Las Vegas defense. Ricky Brown. Standing his ground. Kevin Crooks, the quarterback, he'll dump this one off to Shannon Wilson. And Wilson will get enough for a first down. But it's pretty much academic at this point as the Rebels just trying to run out the clock, most likely. Great day for the Aggies. You know, we pointed out earlier, UNLV's moving into the WAC next year. Have fun. Because <laughs> here, oh, man. They got some work to do. around the right side. The clock ticks down to two and a half minutes. David Locke will get the post-game comments from John L. Smith coming up shortly. Brooks pass right into the hands of Briscoe, but the Aggie defense was there quickly. They closed in a hurry, a fine defensive play. Let's go back down to David Locke. You know, the offense has played great here in the second half, and that just means there's two really bored guys sitting down here on the sidelines. Todd Wilson, the long snapper, and Nathan Moyale, <laughs> yeah. the They haven't gotten to play in the second half. I guess they're the key to the victory. <laughs> They've just been hanging out. 2.02 to play. Brooks pass to the tall. Oh, that's fumble. Aggies have the ball, but there's a flag in the backfield. If that's holding, Aggies will have it. We'll see what the flag is. Aggies on the field with uh, Curtis Radford, who's uh, one of their defensive players, who is David Fox, is deaf. That's right, we did a feature on him in the coaches show uh, last week. Has to watch the, his teammates and on the offense. that kind of thing to get his signals. So the Aggies have the ball, another turnover, and uh, boy, when it rains, it pours on these Rebels, but Utah State, you gotta credit them. They're doing everything right, making the hits. Tough loss there for Horton. But the Aggies looking good. Matt Wells is the quarterback. Ernesto Ramos is running, and the clock down to 145, and presumably they'll just run this one out. I don't, they need another one. I'm not sure if John L. Smith's even got the headset on him. I see him over there giving hugs to the coaches and feeling pretty good about this one. Greg, you certainly want to have some momentum going into the your next season. If you, you come out of here with a big victory, finish up against Pacific with a big win, then you've got something to build on for next year. Well, and, and uh, another thing that, to, to tell you the truth, that the Aggies are really interested in knowing is will they have Abu Wilson a year from now? Uh, you know, I, I think there's an excellent chance the Aggies, in petitioning for the hardship, will get it if, if that's the route that they go. Obviously, now with Abu's great season, professional people can have some interest in him look at this wells is keeping it again well, the ball here. <laughs> matt wells a couple of running plays and that should wrap it up they won't have to snap it again that's going to do it aggies are going to leave with a big win 
and a complete game. They give up zero points and they score 42. As Coach John L. Smith will work his way to midfield to shake the hand of Jeff Horton. But it's all Aggies today in Southern Nevada as they come away with a big win over UNLV. Cindy Crawford after you were 42 nothing. Well, you're beautiful right now. You get, you get one of those. John, you got me fired up, evidently. I am, I am. I'm proud of our kids again. Uh, I was beginning to wonder if we're ever going to put it together if we're killing ourselves offensively, mistakes after mistakes. But um, I have to give a lot of credit to our offensive front. They came out and we run the football, and that's what we wanted to do. And uh, it just played as a team. We've got to come back next week and uh, build on this. See if we can't get another one. You know, I, you're so happy you might kiss me, so I don't want to stay here any longer because you don't know what you might do next. I don't know, I don't know if I'll go that far. <laughs> uh, congratulations, John. Everybody. I'll big win for you. Appreciate it. The Aggies do the job on the Rebels, 42 to nothing. Back up to Dave and Craig in the booth. Dave, if you think he's ready to kiss you, you're giving yourself way too much credit. <laughs> you, know, you never know the crazy man. 42 to nothing. Big win for the Aggies. We'll be back to Las Vegas in a moment. When I'm in my Jimmy, nothing gets in my way. Of course, I've got Jimmy's available four-wheel drive anti-lock brakes and premium smooth suspension. Yeah, when I'm in my Jimmy, I'm in complete control. Daddy, Daddy! It's when I get out that I begin to panic. Now with the purchase of a GMC Jimmy, you can get up to $300 worth of add-on accessories at no charge. See your Utah Intermountain GMC truck dealer today. Now that cold weather set in, come into Intermountain Farmers for warmer work clothing. Because if your job keeps you outside during the winter months, you know how cold it can get. Dressing properly can be critical. So whether your outdoor activities are for work or for fun, come see our stylish new jackets and workable insulated coveralls. Designed to be convenient and easy to put on as well as comfortable to work in. IFA has the cold weather apparel you need at a price you can afford. We're still serving your needs.